Hello and welcome to this week's Australian Stock Market Report. Now this week, we're going to take a look at Telstra and whether now is a good time to buy this stock. And then we'll get into the Australian stock market. So I can share with you my thoughts on where it's heading, along with answering your questions and looking at stocks for you. Hello, I'm Dal Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within. And we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Now, before we move on, thank you for showing your support for our channel and hitting that subscribe button. Remember, as you subscribe, click the bell on the right of it so you keep up to date with our latest videos. Also, you need to remember to tune into our live Australian stock market show, which is on every Tuesday, 7 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Now, this is the show where you get to ask us, the stock market education and trading experts, to look at your favorite stocks and answer all of your most burning questions. Now, last week, Telstra completed its corporate restructure, which begs the question as to whether this is the start of a strong growth period for the big telco, or will it disappoint once again? Telstra listed on the Australian Stock Exchange in 1997, and for the vast majority of time, it has disappointed investors as it spent more time falling rather than rising. After a brief period trading under the stock ticker code TLSDA, this week Telstra started trading back under its original ticker TLS. Now for those who may not know, Telstra restructured itself so that Telstra is now a holding company of its three business subsidiaries, which include InfraCo Fixed, InfraCo Towers and Servco. The restructure will allow Telstra to get more value out of its assets which will lead to more profit, and it allows Telstra to grow as we move into an ever-increasing age that is reliant on communication services. Now, investors would be disappointed this year, as Telstra has fallen just over 6% since the 1st of January, although it has fared better than the All Ordinaries Index, which is down nearly 9% in the same time. This restructure has been a long time coming, and I strongly believe Telstra will now break out of its lacklustre performance over the past few years that has seen it grow by 11% since the 1st of November 2017. Now, the good news for long-suffering shareholders is that I believe Telstra will be bullish over the longer term. And now that the restructure has occurred, this should take the handbrake off and allow it to take off down the superhighway. The expected price target I have is at least $4.60 in the not too distant future and between $5 and $6 over the medium term. Now it's time we get into what were the best and worst performing sectors last week. The best performing sectors included energy up 4.96%, followed by utilities up 3.63% and materials up 2.63%. The worst performing sectors included consumer staples and that was down 0.15% followed by healthcare, and that was up 0.39 of a percent, and financials was up 0.93 of a percent. The best performers in the S&P ASX top 100 stocks included Downer EDI, and that was up 9.79%, followed by Fortescue Metals up 7.52%, and Illumina, that was up 7.41%. The worst performing stocks included Domino's Pizza, down 12.48%, followed by Lend Lease Group, and that was down 12.07%, and Aurora, that was down 4.58%. Now, before we get into my thoughts on the market, if you've not got on your hands on a copy of my first book, How to Beat the Managed Funds by 20%, you can still get it for free. You just have to pay the shipping. Now, in this book, I show you the biggest mistakes that I see traders and investors make, which can cost them thousands. Of course, I'm actually going to show you how to avoid those mistakes and how you can start investing and trading with more certainty than 95% of all current investors. To get your free copy, you have to order it from the homepage of our website, wealthwithin.com.au. Remember, I'm paying for the book. All you have to do is pay for the shipping and handling costs. So what do I expect in the market moving forward? Well, let's get into the charts for our S&P 500 All Ordinaries Index update for this week. We'll also answer your questions and look at the stocks that you've chosen for me. So early last week, you would have been super, super excited about our market as it just took off like a rocket earlier in the week. 
But uh, Thursday, that all changed when the market came back with a thud. And so last week was a little bit of one where there was a lot of indecision on our mark, where the bulls came in quite strongly early on, but the bears came back. So let's go and have a look at the charts to see exactly what happened and whether we can expect an up week for this week and for the coming weeks or whether we do need to expect some more downside. So let's go and have a look at the charts. On the, the left is our monthly chart and on the right is a weekly chart. Now, I just want to show you this monthly chart first and having a look at this. Now, Currently, we've had that one big month solidly up there in October. Beautiful, beautiful month. And so far, here's uh, November, which is only one week, obviously. So it started to push right up, came back, and is closing right down here. Now, have a look at this part. This is July, pushed right up strongly. Uh, then August, it tried to push up and come back. It almost looks identical, these two runs. Now, obviously, the difference between this move here and this move here is that August is a completed month on this chart, whereas November... We've only just begun, that's just one week. So I really would like to see this move right up strongly and go through that high. There's 7,386 points to see if we can, or this is a new bull market, or whether this is just a little bit of a move up like here and another further move down, because it is still possible. Now, whilst the possibility or the probability is slightly less than it's coming down to this sort of area around 6,200 points through here and down in, over the next month or two, it's still there. And we still need to be mindful that it could actually happen because of you know uh, news around the world, uh, events, and as I've said to before in the past, we can't really predict volatility. All we can do is have plans for whether the market goes up or down, which is what most people don't do. They don't plan, they just, basically buy stocks hoping for the best and that they go up, but they don't plan in case they start to fall away. Whether that's on a nice bullish side here or whether it's on a bearish side that we've got through here, they just don't plan. Uh, and that's the biggest issue that I find people um, have in their trading is they don't have an exit strategy at all. And that's really why we push my book so hard and why I said, you know, if you haven't got it yet, jump on and grab it. You can get that first book for free, just pay the shipping. I mean, $9, I think it is for the shipping and handling. That's nothing you'll pay for it in less than in point something of, of your first trade or, or helping you just exit better. You'll, it'll more than pay for itself. So, But at this stage at the moment, what we need to be making mind, or be mindful of is the market moving forward rather than moving down. If we start seeing this turning around in the close, getting lower and lower and coming into this bar, then we might see a bit of a turnaround and go back down here. But again, I think probability is a little bit more on the bullish side than the berry side, but the bulls aren't coming out in force very, very much. Now, looking here, this is last week, so that was their major low back through there at the start of October. So last four weeks, we've had a bit of indecision through here. Last week, you can see it strongly moved up really early in the week, big, big move and came back to close about halfway up that bar. And what we see, if I go down to the daily chart, you'll see what happened. You can see here, Monday, big Tuesday, big strong bar. Wednesday, pushed up, re retraced again, closed near where it opened. And then Thursday, this huge, nearly wiped out all of the gain uh, that we saw from Monday to Wednesday. I mean, look at that, that's 2.81%. By Wednesday, it was up 3.27%. Yeah. And by, it was down 2.32% at one stage on Thursday, down 1.7%, but there's Friday, closed slightly up on Friday, which was a good sign. If we did see another bearish bar, I mean, obviously this is uh, didn't go lower than the previous bar, um, but if it did close, it we did go lower than that one and close lower, then I would suggest this week would be a down week. That said, I do expect, if I go back to the weekly chart and show you, you can see the indecision. Sorry, before I move on, that's our 7,000 points. So you can see now it's been, it's holding above that 7,000 points. It came down to near it. So you can see the low on this bar here was 7,011. I'd love to see this thing move up and break through that high. If they can get through that 7,200 points this week and move through that nicely and close above that this week, I think the bullish move is on the way for the remainder of this year. But at the moment, if we do see the, the market coming down this week, then I think we've probably got one, maybe one, maybe two weeks down. And I'll go to the weekly chart and just show you we are. We generally would need, I don't think we're going to get this big, strong rise of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks up. I don't think we're going to get that, but hopefully we do, but I don't think we will. I think we'll get one or two weeks down in the next two weeks. If not, we'll get one or, I won't say one or two weeks down. This week could be down, next week could be down, or either week could be down um, in the next couple of weeks. That's what I'm thinking. Um, but I would love to see another green bar here, another one rising above that 7,200 points before it did that. So I'd love to see this week up, uh, a week down 
in two weeks' time or, or, or next week or the week after, uh, and then only one week down and then take off again through to Christmas. That's what I'd love to see. And that's the optimistic or up to optimist in me, and, and we're all optimists when it comes to the stock market. all like to go it to go up rather than go down. But at this point in time, I think it is showing weakness. It is... It is above that 7,000 points that I mentioned, though that all important 7,000 points, but it's not its not giving me enough confidence yet. You can see here, most of the closes and opens are all below that over that since we've seen that um, since September. So I really do want to see a nice strong close right up around that 7,200 points before I say that the bull market is it, is, it is on its way. So therefore what we need to be doing is still need to be careful. We need to be really selective in the stocks that we're looking at, at buying because they're still, there's not a lot of, what's I say, how do I say it? It's basically the market will go up when the bulls overpower the bears. So the people selling and the, and the ones that are bearish in their mood, when the bulls really overpower them, that power overpower them, that's when the market will take off. And at the moment, I'm not seeing enough of that coming in. I'm seeing bulls coming in and then bears coming in and then selling off. And, and that's what we're seeing over the last couple of months, a lot of indecision. So at the moment, we still need to be careful about the stocks we buy. Again, I really strongly suggest we stay away from those lower cap stocks. I think there's some really good looking big stocks that we are seeing in the top 50 stocks that are setting themselves up for some really nice runs. And so if you are patient, you will be well rewarded. If you're trying to chase returns, then you might get bitten in the backside. But anyway, that's it for my take on the Australian stock market for today. But let's get into the questions that you have for me. Okay, the first question that we have today is from Mr. Keithy, who says, Hi, Dale, long time watcher. I've been patiently waiting for AMP to have a strong close over $1.26 for a small buy, yet worried as it's AMP. And I can understand that. He goes on to say, and it's up from 90 cents. What are your thoughts on AMP? Is it in a recovery phase or not to be trusted just yet? Thanks, Keith. It's really good that you've been watching for a long time. And it's also really, really good that you've been patient on AMP. But I'm wondering why AMP is, I won't say you have a fascination for AMP because there are other stocks that are going up that you could be looking at than AMP. But I look, I share your fears. I know so many times over the last few years, or even the last decade, that I thought, wow, AMP is looking really, really good. And then it's gone and disappointed uh, us. But I mean, AMP has worked through a lot of it, a lot of its issues that it's had as a company, et cetera. And I think we may be seeing um, it's starting to formulate that base from which it can build. But let's go and have a look at the chart to see whether it's a buy now, because is it really a buy? Now on the screen, on the left is is the monthly chart, on the week is the right, on the right is a weekly chart. And you can see that's moving up quite nicely, but is this stock or has this stock stopped falling? And I remember, you know, I remember I remember this day clear as day in my mind, this back in June 1998. I was living in Sydney. I was in North Sydney and I was working and I was standing. I was looking at the stock market exchange and everything around that time, watching this and, and talking to people about AMP. And let's look at this. Outside of this, and it has some big, big runs in the middle of it. I mean, look at this run from that low end. 2003 to there is up 302%. It's had some other runs that it's done some nice little runs through here and a nice little run through here, but generally most of the time it's been falling. So there's not a lot of positive news about AMP, but has it stopped falling? And you can see there that low there at 85 cents. It has been moving up since January. So it's been slightly moving up all year, doing quite well because obviously the All Lords is, as I said earlier, it's down something 5%. So it's up about 50 or well, 45% this year so it's doing really really well and it has broken through some of that resistance but yeah, i don't know it keeps in my back is it on a long-term bullish move i think it is but again i still put a reservation in my voice there and uh, i think uh, it has broken up about over this sort of resistance sort of area right across there at about that dollar 20 so but i wouldn't surprise me if it came back within to that and what i mean by that if i use my where's my trend arrow I have to go and find it again. Um, where's my tools? There we go, sorry. Uh, there it is. So what might happen is we might see something like that and then move up to there. So don't be surprised if we see a bit of a retracement coming through back into this, because sometimes that happens. You'll see, you'll see what you'll see is people were sitting up above that dollar twenty area, which is what you were talking about. I want you said I want to see it close above that dollar twenty area. So you might say there might be hundreds or thousands of orders above that area, and this is where support and resistance is good, 
but it's also a sucker's uh, a sucker's paradise it, it does and so many people every man woman dog and child knows about support and resistance and people often use support and resistance as a buy i never do uh, and janine and i never ever use support and resistance just because a, a stock breaks through an area or uh, support or, or resistance area doesn't mean to buy or sell to it, us it's an area that we need to watch but so many people will set their buy above that dollar 20 and so what actually happens is the big end of town or the brokers might push a stock through that area and you'll see a whole lot of people sitting there they'll get all those orders triggered and then they'll actually start selling into that order and push it right back down again and they'll they, they might might be tens of millions of dollars that they push through to get those trades happening because remember they make money out of all the trades the brokers do but then if they're um <clears throat> pushing it through and buying and then getting everybody else to buy and then then selling into that they might make one or two percent or five percent out of you know ten million dollars or twenty million dollars or hundred million dollars depending on how much trading is there so you see all of those buyers above that level will get sucked out and then when that happens it'll drop back down into the into this area or back into this area again and then it might take off again so i'm suspect it may do that so just be careful at this point in time but again i do think it does look more longer term bullish uh, at the moment, but again, I, I really do have to be saying that with my tongue in my cheek because it's AMP and AMP is almost a four letter word in my book. Um, and insurance companies are generally four letter words in my book. I mean, QBE is another one that's disappointed so many times and it's a great company. So I generally stay away from insurance companies because you just don't know, but I do like AMP at the moment. I do think you're probably right. Uh, it is on a longer term move but again as always it doesn't really matter the upside handles itself and this is what i say to people don't worry about the upside if you're in a stock and it's going up stay with it why would you want to exit a stock always 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 focus more on the downside and if i was to ask anybody watching it how much time they spend on looking to buy stocks and balance that with how much time they're looking at selling stocks or exiting at the right place i can guarantee probably 90 percent of your focus is on buying stocks and maybe 10 percent on selling where it should be exactly the opposite way anybody can throw a dart at a dartboard with stock codes on and pick a stock anybody can do that only good investors and good traders know when to exit and how to exit that's why i keep saying to you buy my book it's free just pay the shipping it's on the website it's my first book you click on the home page up the top it says a big button there nine odd dollars for the shipping and handling and i buy the book for you so get the book for free just pay shipping i'll show you how to get in and out managing your portfolio and doing everything you need to do to really be more confident than most people on the marketplace and the feedback we get from that book today even though it's, i wrote it about 2004 i think three or four we still get a huge amount of um um, people coming back to us with emails saying, wow, you know, they finally understand they've got more confidence on the market and they know where they were going wrong. So if you haven't bought the book, please go and get it. But thank you for that stock for AMP. Again, just be careful. As long as you've got your downside covered and your stop losses covered, then I don't have a problem with it at the moment. The next question we got is from Jay Deep, who says, hi, Dale, always watch your show and really great info. Thanks um, for doing that. Thanks. Do you think with the recession type world, the buy now, pay later sector can be a good buy for a medium term i didn't trade i did trade zip at its peak uh, not holding it now it looks attractive at this price but it's not moving much higher um, or unlike last time in 2021 your thoughts will be greatly appreciated um, look i don't necessarily share your view on you know if the markets or the the economy is not great i'm assuming that's what you're saying that buy now pay later will be more attractive i look i don't think I'm, I'm not that attracted to the buy now, pay later space at this point in time. There is a lot of competition out there. And as I've said for a couple of years, and whilst people have made money out of, you know, Zip and Afterpay and some of those other companies, uh, in that whole general payment space, there's a whole payment space from people like buy now, pay later or, or um, payment machines and all sorts of things that are out there. A lot of companies that people have made money out of it. But what happens is, is you see industries start to grow and they'll get these small companies do really, really well. Then what happens is the big companies come in when the market's been created, they let the smaller companies take all the risk and then the bigger companies come in and, and then dominate, um, whether that's the banks and the banks are great at doing this. They let everybody else cut their teeth uh, and take the risk out of it for them and they'll come in and buy off and, and do what they need to do. But I'm not 
super, super bullish on the buy now, pay later sector. And I know some people are because they've seen stocks like Z, uh, Zip, like as you've traded it before, it took off like a rocket that, and has done really, really well. But let's go and have a look at the chart just to see where it is now. I'll just bring that up. I'll get AMP off there. And so you can see this and you look at it's right back to where it was. If you look at that, so you can see here it's right back to where it was in 2017. So over five years ago after having some masses, masses rise. So just because you've made money in a stock before does not mean you're going to make it money in again. And just because a stock has done something in the past doesn't mean it will do that again. At the moment, it looks a little, little bit better. It looks like it's moved up one month in July. It did really, really well off that low. And you can see up there nearly 300% before closing up 157%. But it's really done nothing since then, hasn't it? It's gone down. It's slightly up for the last week. It's, it really doesn't excite me as a stock, and so I'm not sure why you want to look at this stock at this moment. As I said, I don't necessarily agree with you. I'm not saying it's not going to take off. I am definitely not saying that, but right now it's not giving me enough confidence to say this is a great stock and it could do really, really well. And, and it, again, as you can see there, it's, it's, it's a harder one for people to get into. Now, let me see if I can zoom that up so you can really, oops, sorry, if you can see where it is. It's holding at the moment, but it's not really convincing. Look at all these bars. And this is what we teach in our trading mentor course, the, the ba our very basic cheapest chip course that's, you know, it's under two grand and you get me to answer all your questions, but all this does not tell me that this is a strong stock at the moment. And that's really what I'm looking at at the moment. But again, thank you for your, um, your support of our show and thanks for you know, writing it in and asking that question. But right now, I think I'd just be watching Zip Pay and just seeing whether it did you want a whole lot of buying behind it. And right now with the market the way it is, people are nervous about the stock market. They're not strongly behind it. And when what happens with these stocks, it's like a snowball stock like this. It'll start to move up because you get a few people buying in early and then it'll, and then you'll start seeing the percentages of, of growth start to spike a little bit more. Then a few more people get into it and then it grows a little bit more and it's gone up. And then after a couple of months, it might be up 50 or 60 or 70%. And all of a sudden, that's people talking about it on chat forums and everything else. And then it, all of a sudden it goes go boom and it, the snowball gets huge and all these people jump in most of the people will jump in near the end and then they'll start to tank the other way because people got in first will be selling out to the people that got in last and we see this happen so often at the time it's like the majority of people will get in near the end of the peak so if i go back onto that chart which i won't most of the if i look at all the volumes around those peak that big peak that it had most of the people would have got in there because that's when most people will, they, 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 the fear comes out of it for them because they say, oh, it's already risen 100% in the last three months, so it's going to do that again. And it doesn't necessarily have to do that. We're not going to see those things again at the moment on this stock. I think what we're going to see is maybe a slow build up on it um, and then possibly take off if that sector does grow. But uh, right now, there's a lot of competition in that area for them. So again, I'm not necessarily, um, how do I say it? agreeing with your thoughts on this sector, but I'm not disagreeing with it too much. I'd like to see a little bit more proof, but thank you for asking the question. The next question we have today is from Matthew who says, hi Dale, thanks for another great show. That's my pleasure. Uh, Matthew said, can you have a look at Aristocrat Leisure? I got in uh, the stock at $36.91 two weeks ago after it closed above a weekly chart high of $36.57 on the 4th of July. Just wondering if it's good, if it's a good buy or crap. Thanks for your honest and no BS feedback regards, Matt. Well, let's see if uh, Aristocrat Leisure is good or crap. Um, I'm not sure it's crap, but hey, it could be. But let's go and have a look at it. I'll bring that up. Also, I want to bring up Telstra before we finish today as well. But looking at this stock, um, looking at long term, Look at it, it just, it's just trending along nicely, isn't it? So I do like it at the moment. I think it looks good. Uh, let me get me a little trend line. You can see the momentum, it's quite, it's quite good on its momentum. It's just come back to its, it flies up and then it comes right back down to it. And I think right now it is looking quite nice. Um, look, October, beautiful, beautiful, strong month. Now at the moment, it's struggling to get above that. So look at, if you look at this, that was its highest close. October, its highest close since probably probably about there, it's about in all, nearly all year, pretty much since January, so that's good. November hasn't pushed through, so I'd like to see it push through, but obviously that's only one week, a little bit of indecision, but it's not looking too bad. Um, you bought last week. I'm not sure why you bought last week. You said you weren't buying above a peak, and obviously there's 36.97, there's 
37.44. So you bought above a peak. I would expect right now, uh, uh, what I would be thinking is at the moment, it's struggling to get it through there last week. I would expect to show you more, well, oh, pretty much if I draw the arrow, I reckon this is what you'll start to see. You'll see something like that. Like I was talking about before, I think you might see a bit of a move down for one or two weeks for then to move up. So don't be surprised if that happens. I'm not discounting it's going to move up from exactly where it is right now, but it is not looking super strong. That's that's not a strong bar, that's not a strong bar, and that's definitely not a strong bar. And these are three weeks where it's actually traded up. So I don't think that was enough for me to buy just breaking through the previous peak. There's a lot of other rules that I would have put onto that stock before buying it. And right now, I think we might see one or two weeks down. Uh, if you get three or four weeks down, then I would suggest it'll probably come right down to this sort of level through here. But um, make sure you've got a stop loss on it. That's the critical thing that I want to care with you is I like this stock. I think it's good at the moment, but I just you need to make sure you've got a stop loss on it because it hasn't proven it's starting to move up at this point in time. I think you jumped too early and I don't necessarily think the rule that you've used, if you've just used, if your only rule to buy that, it was a, it traded above a previous peak and that was the only thing that you used, and, and again, I'm qualifying my statement here, if that is the only rule that you use to buy, then that's not a good rule. And it's the same as what I was talking about a little bit earlier on another Another stock is just buying through something going through resistance is not a rule to buy. And just trading through a prior peak is not a rule to buy. It's a rule, but it's not a rule to buy. And if you were using that rule, I would have two or three other rules underneath that to get confluence of the rules. And it, what we say to people is, is if you've got one rule to buy, and it might have 50% win-loss ratio. And then if I put a second rule in there, that might put it to 60% win-loss ratio. And if I put a third rule in, it might be 70% win-loss ratio. What would you rather, 50% or 70%? That's the difference between traders and investors or um, how do I pay it? Amateur traders or uneducated traders. A lot of uneducated traders will use support and resistance to buy. Not a good rule. Definitely not a good rule. What I need, what we do is what we teach traders to do is put a confluence of rules together so that they bring their probability up so you have more winning trades, less losing trades. You don't lose the big amounts. You don't get into poor trades. You actually get into better trades and have more wins than losses and your profits are better than, and your losses are less. And, and really, you know, as I said a little bit earlier, you know, our trading mentor course is dirt cheaper. Anybody trading the market should just do it. It's not, it shouldn't even be a question of whether you do, you do or you don't do it. You should just do it. And, and I'm saying that with, I'm not, yes, I'm biased because I put the course together, but geez, there's so much good crap in that, if that makes sense. You know, because I mean, that's what we use. It's, there's so many good stuff in that that will tidy up your trading, have you making far more money because constantly, because I answer all the emails and I see the emails where the students coming through and they go, wow, you know, this, I'm understanding the market more, my trades are better, I'm making more money. I'm not getting the losses, I'm more confident. I mean, what do you want in your trading? All of that, don't you? And so questioning whether you'd spend under $2,000 to do a course, it shouldn't even be like, oh, am I going to do that or not? It should be just, yes, do it, and you'll get the results. And that's really what I'm saying. So, But I do think, you know, right now at this point in time, I think you entered too early onto aristocrat leisure. I don't think, uh, I, I look, as I said, I think one or two weeks down, then it might take off, but just make sure you've got a stop loss somewhere down in here. Hopefully you've done that um, and it should be okay. Now I'm going to have a look at Telstra here. Just I want to finish up on Telstra, just to short, talk to you a little bit more about it. You can see the same sort of thing with Telstra as we saw in Aristocrat Leisure. There's a lot of resistance around that sort of $4 area. And, you know, and there'll be people up there sitting there going, if it gets above that 4 or 5 dollars forty area, four thirty, they'd buy Telstra. I like this stock long term and it's looking really, really good. I think this is just stalling at the moment and I think we'll start to move up and hopefully with this new restructure, we will see it really take off. Now, this is a monthly chart. You can see it hasn't fallen away much and I think once it gets through this sort of 4, 440 area, it's going to start to take off and get into a really, really nice uptrend. Again, long term. I'm talking about not short term, not medium term. This is more of a, I would say it's one of more of a plotter stock, if that makes sense. 
It's not it's not going to break land speed records like some stocks, but it's going to be a good stock for superannuation portfolios, for big blue chip portfolios. It does look really, really good. And I think um, short term targets up around where I mentioned a little bit earlier and then longer term targets up around that six dollars mark. But I think in the next six months, it could get up into that first target area and over the next one to two years up into around that six dollar mark. So please have a good look at Telstra if you've got a uh, I'm not telling you to buy that today. I'm just saying right now I do like it. And if it does start to move up, it might trigger some buy rules um, from that point of view. But I do like the stock, so just be careful. Um, if you do have a superannuation fund or you want uh, sort of a more blue chippy type, low risk portfolio, then this is one that you would put on your watch list to stack into that because I think it's going to look after you over the next three, four, five to 10 years. I think it's going to do quite well um, in that bracket. But thank you to everyone for sending in your questions. I really do appreciate it. It makes this show and it makes this show more interesting for everybody else because we are looking at questions from real people who have real challenges on the market and stocks that you're looking at right now. And that brings up a whole lot of issues that I could talk to. I mean, I don't know what you know, and I don't know what you want to know. I'm I'm guessing about what you want to know, but if you don't answer the questions, I can't give it to you, if that makes sense. So by you, by asking better questions, you get better answers from me and you get more out of my head. And so please put your questions down below, really. Uh, But remember, the best way to get your questions answered is to publicly subscribe to our channel. And that means there's a little red thing next to your name. And then type your question in below uh, in, the, in the comment section. We do love having your questions down there. Also remember that here on this channel, we do these Monday market reports each and every week. We also do our live stream every Tuesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. Now make sure you give us a big thumbs up. Now you've been a bit slack here. I know nine out of 10 people watching this don't give us a big thumbs up. Please support the show. I mean, it does take a lot to get this show out every single week and obviously the live show. So remember, hit the like button, but also hit the subscribe button now and click the bell on the right of it so you know when we upload and go live. That's it for me. I'm Dale Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within. Goodbye, good luck and good trading.